social media needs no introduction. We all know by now its concept and what it offers. But have you ever stopped to consider what actually is going on in all these platforms to provide you with the content you're currently consuming? In the last couple of years, there's been a lot of focus on information integrity and how people believe everything they see and hear online. Who is actually saying the truth? How can you know if they're not lying? Why is there a necessity of having to fact check everything you see now? These questions can take a lot of time and research to answer. And although social media offers great benefits, such as entertainment, communication, marketing and learning, I am here to present to you what the scientific studies have learned across the years on how social media can affect our lives and why there's a lot of negativity and controversy surrounding it. This is Behind the Scenes of Social Media. Social media started back in 2004, when MySpace hit a million active users. Originally intended to be a venue for music artists to share their music and concert dates. MySpace, as you know, changed pop culture. Yes. Like it did. Did you have an idea that that was going to happen? No, that's the one thing. People asked, did you know it was going to be big? And that was the plan. I mean, we were thinking very big, but sort of the way that it just became, you know, this thing that, that's cool for people and, and that there's music and film and, and fashion and all these things. I didn't really expect it. I'm not a cool guy. You know, I didn't expect that to happen. So I don't know how it happened. Ever since then, social media has drastically changed, allowing users to post images, videos, music, articles, and basically almost anything they want. And the best of all is that it is possible that you can make a living out of it. With all these advantages, how can there be so much criticism regarding giants like Facebook, YouTube, Instagram to say a few? Although there are many issues with social media, the one that I'll be looking at today is how these platforms manipulate their content in a way where they may have an impact in your life, as well as the dangers that come with it. Studies have found that social media has the potential of being a source of stress, discomfort, and even self-comparisons to other people online. With these comparisons tending to be mostly negative, based on what other people are doing or saying. The literature has found some examples of certain social media facets that have a negative impact on people. Getting negative feedback or cyberbullying from people on the internet, learning about negative situations around the world, or feeling pressure to maintain a certain profile or information updated to your peers. This happens due to the fact that exposure to social media makes people believe that others are having better lives and are happier overall than ourselves. When we see others posting their trip to the beach, hiking a mountain, going to a party, you usually get this feeling of being left out maybe even thinking that you're probably boring or you're not cool enough to hang out with them. This is what it's called social comparison, which is simply the process of people constantly comparing themselves to others to get a better grasp on themselves. However, when the others are seen as superior, the feelings of envy and jealousy start to come up. These feelings of stress can lead up to psychiatric disorders in extreme cases such as anxiety or depression, which is starting to become more common than you may think. Disorders from anxiety are the second leading cause of disability among all psychiatric disorders, where the age range goes between 15 to 40 years old. It is important to point out that there is no scientifically valid study that 100% connects anxiety with social media use, so blaming these platforms for their services would be unfair. Still, numbers don't lie that there is a relation between anxiety and social media use. Take a look at this graph of the evolution of social media from 2004 to 2018. The first six years had 500 million people. Six years after that, the user base was 2 billion. I think it is fair to say that the number of users has jumped incredibly high. But with this, the number of issues have escalated quickly. A study found that there was a 52% increase in adolescents reporting symptoms of major depression in a given year 
between 2005 and 2017, while in adults the number was 63 percent from 2009 to 2017. Like in sports, the highlight reel is a collection of the best and brightest moments. Social media is our personal highlight reel. It's where we put up our wins or when we look great or when we're out with friends and family. But we struggle with insecurity because we compare our behind the scenes with everyone else's highlight reels. We are constantly comparing ourselves to others. And yes, this was happening before social media with TV and celebrity, but now it's happening all the time and it's directly linked to you. Take a look at this survey conducted by Pure Research Center, where in 2018, they asked teens about their views on social media effects on people their age. This is what they found. Keep in mind that some of the teens that answered this back in 2018 are probably adults by now. This picture shows us two very opposite sides of a single coin. While 40% said that social media is great for connecting with important people, which it really is. We cannot ignore the fact of cyberbullying, unrealistic views of other people's lives, distraction and damage in relationships. It is important to look that in this study, mental health issues wasn't in the top categories. Thus, we can see that the effects of social media can be very dynamic and unpredictable. And it really depends on what type of environment you develop the kind of people that surround you, and even your own expectations. But this answer alone is not enough. How many times have we been given the answer, well, it depends. For those who are having negative effects from social media, those talking about their problems out loud, it won't make a difference when the answer is, it depends. So. Is there a way to find out why the negative effects of social media even exist? It is known that the more exposure to something, the more likely it is to present certain reactions to it. The more time we spend on social media, the probability of developing issues like sleeping problems, lower subjective happiness, and even declining performance either from work or academic can present. But for those people that have some of the problems mentioned, or even something completely different, is that really your fault? Who's to blame for the anxiety, stress, or any other symptom social media may cause for you? Unfortunately, there is no study that solves this answer. But we can find a common factor in all of this, which is the truth. The truth of the content we're watching or reading. Why does everyone have such a perfect life? Why is everyone having so much fun, has perfect skin, is always laughing and smiling? Why is my life so boring as I sit here in my underwear covered in breadcrumbs, sad and alone? Why? I'll tell you why. Because they're faking it. We need to understand collectively, nobody's that happy. We are all miserable. They're just so much better at faking it. And you know what they're doing? They're making all this feel even worse. As our technology gets better every single day, it becomes easier and easier for people to post a picture where they look 20 pounds skinnier, to Photoshop themselves into a party they never went to, or in more extreme cases, do things like this, where they put a so uh, toilet seat up against a window so it looks like they're going on an exotic vacation, even if they're actually not. How many times do you stop and wonder if an Instagram picture really reflects the reality of the user? How many times have you asked if what you see in a travel blog is a type of experience you would have had if you visited the exact same locations? How many of you have stopped to think if the product they're selling you actually works? Social media is widely popular due to people being able to maintain social relationships with others that share similar interests activities, backgrounds, and ideas. This leads us to follow people that we think are like us, or people we may aspire to be. And this is where the problem starts. It's shown that the use of social media has no regulations or rules. This allows anyone to post whatever they want while lacking knowledge of costs and benefits. They don't have any stats about target audiences, how to handle public responses, and assess their own effect on public social media. 
This brings up the question of what is actually true and who can you trust? You see, the problem here is that finding the truth of every article or post you find online is almost impossible. A study proposed an online model to validate and verify the credibility of textual news around the internet. This will take 4 to 5 days to assess the credibility of a claim with an 80% accuracy, even including topics with 3 or fewer articles. The issue is that we're not going to spend that amount of time for every bit of information. Although some content may be very easy to know if it's true or not, other content is very challenging and deceptive. A study shows that companies provide information on their own web pages that only benefit them so they can attract potential customers no matter how far from the truth that information is. But it doesn't stop there. We as humans often use discernment to focus on what's true. What the formula is belief in true news minus beliefs in false news. Sounds simple, right? The danger is that I may express a strong belief because I feel like I understand. But my sense of understanding is false. It comes from those around me expressing strong beliefs because they feel like they understand. But their sense of understanding comes from those around them and so on. Individually, none of us knows enough to tell what's true and what's false. And yet, because we feel like we're on firm ground, we don't do enough to verify. And that is how entire groups of people can come to believe things that aren't true. Well, people that have some kind of ideological figure tend to believe in whatever news and information they provide, no matter how false this can be. These influencers have a strong impact on people's lives and are a dominant factor explaining why people fall for fake information. Simply put, People tend to believe more information as truthful when it's associated with their ideological figures. No matter if scientists provide studies, evidence, and methodologies that contradict this, people are very stubborn in this regard. This doesn't apply to every person though, and some are able to identify false information faster than others. But the point here is that we can see that we fall into the factors of why social media can affect us negatively. At the end of the day, the internet has evolved into a huge marketplace with unlimited clients. You can see someone or something selling you whatever product you think as soon as you open your browser. Social media has a huge impact on this because it collects data like your voice, previous visited sites, search topics, time spent on their platform, and so much more. All with the intent of understanding your behavior so they can provide content that engages you. An engaged user is someone who is interacting with content on the platform, viewing, liking, commenting, sharing, and saving posts, for example. The whole objective of social media is to keep users as much as possible because time retention means more ads the user will see, which increases the potential customers for any company that has their ads on. Social media main focus is not to protect users from harassment, toxicity, fake news or any of the negatives discussed, but it's to retain their users the most amount of time possible so they can see ads. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to hate on any of these companies. I actually believe that's an incredible strategy because it benefits both parties to a certain extent. And the social media platforms cannot be fully blamed for someone's problem, but they indeed are an actor on this problem. So if we look at our factors, we have the following. Time spent on social media. Ability to discern fake content. Extreme ad campaigns from companies. Time retention from social media platforms. A study showed that a group had their time reduced on social media to 30 minutes a day, which has proven to reduce levels of anxiety, depression, loneliness, and sleep problems. 
Social media is here to stay and evolve. It still is a very new technology that brings new challenges every day to engineers around the world. It's very hard to regulate the content due to the massive amounts of information that's flowing through. So demanding social media platforms to only show content that's real is a dream that'll never come true. But we've seen that social media can have a very negative effect on people, but it can be helped when we identify the factors that are impacting us the most and try to combat them. My biggest recommendation is trust no one but yourself. No matter how popular, good looking and important the person may be, always fact check your information online. Remember that the internet is just a huge business and everyone is trying to get money from it. They don't care if they have to step on some people to achieve their goals. Take a look at the factors discussed. See if you actually struggle in one of them, or if you have any risks with how you handle your social media. At the end of the day, you're the only one that can manage and overcome those issues.